Today I want to show you how to take just about any random D3 example and turn it into React. Why? Because almost everybody, me included, codes D3 by copy pasting random D3 examples. So let's start by finding a random example first, because I think that's going to make it more interesting if even I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see, D3 example, the big list of D3JS examples. What about 113th US Congressional Districts? That looks great. Okay, we're gonna take that example and turn it into a React version of the same thing. Now that we have the example, let's go through it and see how it works. Apparently it's a map that highlights the currently selected Congressional District. Hello, bird. I'm not talking to you, bird. I am talking to the camera. Okay, so we have the map, and the way it works is everything is done in an in an HTML file, which we're gonna remake in React. You have the basic. This is an HTML stuff. Then we have some styling that gives us the colors and uh, th the colors and the lines. We need that because otherwise everything is invisible in SVG. Then it looks like we're using D3. We're using Mike Bostock's queue system, which is just a way to make many data requests in a row. And then we have top of JSON, which is gonna be used for geo stuff. We have a couple of lines of setting up a geo path and a geographical projection, followed by a command that selects the SVG and gives it a size. Then we have a data request. We request US geodata, to, that makes the map, and then the Congress district, which I think also is gonna make part of the map. It's gonna make the small lines here. After that, we have a callback function when everything is ready, which does the rendering. First, we append the paths and give it data of US. Then we create clip paths, which I'm not actually sure what that does, but I guess we'll find out. Um, and that, this stuff here seems to create the congressional districts, and this the this creates boundaries, and this, cre this creates district boundaries, and this creates state boundaries. Then at the very end, we set a height to this thing here. Cool. Looks like it shouldn't be too hard to remake this in React. So the first thing we need is to run create react app so that we can create a react app. And we wait for this to finish, then we're going to install D3, Q and Topo JSON. All right, that took a while, but we go into our thing and install D3, Q, and top of JSON. Now, one thing we are going to have problems with is that this example is still using D3 V3, but we're going to be installing D3 V4, which is the latest version by about a year now. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to have to do some translating of that as well. Excellent. We have, it says, welcome to React, so we can get started. The first thing we're going to do is copy over the styling because that is the easiest. Also, that word is super loud. So we go into app CSS hey. and just copy paste the uh, all the styling over. That's gonna automatically add it to our page so we don't have to worry about it. Next step is going into app.js and we're going to create a new component just for our chart. Let's call it the uh, congressional districts. Great. So we have here we have to import React and we're going to need component as well. And we are going to need Q from Q. And we are also going to need top of JSON from top of JSON. And let's make our lives easier and import all of D3 from D3. Um, then we can create a new component. And for now let's render something empty so just so we can make sure it all works. We export default congressional districts and go into app.js where we are going to render it instead of all of this. That. And here we say import congressional districts from slash congressional districts. Now we should see an empty page here. Fail to compile, return null. Okay, now we should see it here. Perfect, 
empty page, great progress. The next step is to create an SVG. Because we already know that Congressional Districts is a visualization component, it makes sense to render the SVG around it so that then we can use Congressional Districts in pretty much any, uh, any SVG that we want. So we're gonna say width is 960 because that was the original example. Yep, width 960, height is also 600. And let's put them into um, into our districts thing as well, just so it's easier to use, or so we can scale it as much as we want later on. Cool, we have that. Next step, loading the data. We can do that in, uh, actually let's do it in AppJS as well, because I think it makes sense to load data externally and then put it into our stuff. Let's do everything in congressional districts so it's easier to see how it fits together. So we say component will mount, and we copy over this stuff here. Here. Thank you. And then we need this. Let's see what the actual URL is. And then we copy the same here. And on ready, we're going to make this is now a callback function from our data loading. Okay. And let's print out all the data. And see that it see if it that works. So now when the app loads, we should get a bunch of data here. No, cool. We don't. We no longer need that. Apparently, this is in D3 now, so we can say D3.q. But we aren't getting any data. Let's try refreshing. Okay, so our problem right now is that Mike Bostock's site is not allowing us access. So we're gonna have to download these files and put them in our public folder. Right click, save as. I think it goes like this it's error then US data then US Congress so we have two type of topologies now one is for the US data one is for the Congress congressional district data the next step is going to be rendering all of this which we're gonna try just copy pasting as much as we can from the original example and not change it too much so that we don't have to do too much work before we render let's save our data into state so we have default state says US data is null and US Congress is also null and in our callback we save them this is gonna cause a re-render and save everything so US data US Congress now we're gonna be able to access our stuff here so we can take it out US data and US Congress come from this state if neither of them is there we return null otherwise we're going to have to return something more useful for now let's return an anchor element and we're going to reuse all of d3 stuff to just render directly into that anchor element because that is the easiest way to integrate stuff so we say g and ref is anchor and that's about it so that's the first step for rendering. We're creating an element where we're gonna put D3 stuff into it. Okay, my cleaners are here now, so let's finish this up quickly before they start making too much noise. On component did update, we're going to say const svg is D3 select of this ref's anchor. This, calling it svg is just gonna help us copy paste code. Then we need our projection. The projection tells us how how to shape our map and the path is basically a generator that tells that takes a projection and some top of data and returns um, information for a geo path takes um, takes geo data and a geographical projection and returns path generators for for our thing now i think geo it's called this now so it's no longer d3.geo.path i think it's d3.geopath Let's check. So D3 Geo. So we have D3 Geo. And if we look for Albers. Okay, so it's called just Geo Albers. And Path is called just Geo Path. Perfect. Ah, and we no longer have to say dot projection. We just pass it in. And instead of width and height, we're going to take them out of our props. Remember, we passed them in earlier. Width height is this dot. This dot props. Now we can just copy paste all of this code and in theory it should work. Ah, okay, so we, our data is not defined. So this is expecting US to be US data to be US. 
So we say US is this state US data. And what is the other one? Congress is this state US Congress. That's what we called it, not Congress data. Cannot read property feature of undefined. Okay, so we're having problems with importing top of JSON. So let's go into node modules, look at top of JSON and see what it exports. Um, so we say import, let's do this. Star as top of JSON from top of JSON and that works. See, that was easy. Now my computer is being kind of slow with all the recording and everything. Although for some reason it's wanting me to click on them. Um, this is a pretty dirty way to integrate D3 and, SV and React because we're essentially just doing everything on every render. So if our data changes or anything like that, we're gonna have to re-render the entire map instead of actually using React features. React basically doesn't give us any help here. So what we could do instead is we could convert this to a path component and then use that. So we would have a separate path component for then for districts, we could again have a separate path component where we would just replicate all of these attributes and so on. So that would make it kind of a little better to see because we could have a better structure here where we're returning, we would return the map and then so on. For now, I think this is good enough. I showed you how to do something very simple in 10 minutes. And I would continue and I would make it better, but because the cleaners are here, they're going to start making a lot, of a lot of noise and I won't be able to keep recording.